Pretty good? How's the conference so far? Yeah, good, good. That is my second time in Dublin, and let me tell you, like, someone doesn't want me to be here. You know, the first time I was joking with uh, local people, uh, it was during winter, and I was like, oh, you call this a winter? I'm from Canada, this is not winter. And I caught a cold right after seeing that, like the day after I started to cough, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I just, like, made a joke about the fact that it's not even cold for me. And this time, my luggage decided to stay in Canada. So I'm wearing the same clothes for the last four days. It's not true, I went to do shopping, I changed my clothes, but still, still. Anyway, it's always a pleasure to be here. My name is Fred, Frederick Harper. Why that thing is showing, I'm sorry. Let me hide that. Sorry about that. I'm a director of developer relation at Mindy, and uh, during the talk, if you want to tweet about stuff, take pictures of my ugly face, uh, share good things, bad things, feedback, questions that you don't want to ask in person or if you don't have the time to take a lot of questions, things that you disagree with, feel free to do it on Twitter. I spend way too much time there. My Twitter handle is F Harper, F-H-A-R-P-E-R and I struggle uh, saying my whole name. So today I'm gonna talk about developer documentation and the fact that it's your secret weapon. I'm trying something new also this time. Uh, if for whatever reasons you don't want to give me feedback uh, in person, you don't have time or you don't want to ask questions, either you're too shy or you feel like you should not ask this in public or it's really, really mean feedback and you don't want to say it in my face. There's that link that I'm trying recently. It's, uh, ngl.link slash Frederick Harper. They didn't have have Harper available. And you can send me anonymous question. And uh, like anonymous question, like there's no way for me to know uh, where it was sent or who sent it unless I pay like 60 bucks per month, which completely defeat the idea of like having something anonymous. So yeah, uh, you can use that, more than happy. Uh, yeah, so on that note, okay, I need to point the clicker. We only have 45 minutes, and uh, I don't think, I know people in the room, but if you saw me in other conferences, if you follow me online, you know I talked a lot. Actually, this is my job, I'm being paid to talk. So 45 minutes for me is like not enough to talk about developer documentation. So what I'm gonna try to do today is to give you as much of, I mean, uh, like many tips about developer documentation, the importance of it, how you can make a good developer documentation and how can it help your business or your company or your product to be, or yourself to be more successful. So the idea is like a bunch of tips and also guiding or guidelines to really give a better experience to your users. So let's start with a quote because every good presentation has a quote. Your developer's documentation is an integral part of your product. One cannot exist without the other. I need to point out. And that person who said that is me. <laughs> yes, I'm quoting myself. But uh, joke aside, one cannot exist without the other. I'm a little bit exaggerating here. Like it's not totally true, but still, it's really part of like, if you have, you can have the best product out there. You can have a wonderful product that solved all my problem or that helped me to be more productive as a developer, but if I go on your documentation, and your documentation sucks, it's not good, it's not interesting, it doesn't help me to do what I have to do, or it's really difficult to understand, or it's not a hub to date, there's a chance I don't like your product. There's a chance I don't know how to use your product. There's a chance that I will never use your product and just go see and use a competitor or use another product or another software or another services out there. So documentation for developers for your product is critical, is really, really important. So there is more than like being successful overall. There is many opportunities that come with great documentation. Oh yeah, that works. So, <laughs> so the, the biggest thing is that uh, documentation is kind of like the foundation, as I said, of your product. It is the one point of entry to your product that people will use. So you want to extinguish fire 
even before they start, and your documentation will help you to do that. So first thing first, you know when something is not working, people will complain on Twitter, people will try to contact customer support. If you have great documentation, you will minimize the number of people that will need to send you an email or contact customer support or uh, go on a forum or ask questions on Stack Overflow about your product. If your documentation is well written, you're gonna minimize the number of people that need support. You're gonna minimize the number of customers that will complain about your product because we are all really quick, especially developers. We're really vocal when we don't like something on Twitter, on different forums, on Slack, on Discord. We are really good at that. I don't know for you, for you. I'm really, really good about that. I complain a lot of Twitter. Actually, I would say my Twitter is about 50% cats and 49.9% uh, shit post. So uh, that's basically what I do on Twitter. And you know, when something is not working, uh, people complain. When people complain, it means that they're not happy. And everybody is an influencer. Not in the like, oh, I'm an Instagram influencer, influencers on the beach and taking pictures, think kind of things. But you know, you always influence something. You all have a personal brand. So if I say product X is not good, maybe some of my follower will see that. Maybe some of my friend, maybe some of my coworker will remember that the day they want to use that product, the product X, and it will say, you know what? I'm not even gonna try it. Fred, try it. He didn't like it. Not because I'm good or I'm better than other people. It's just because we have a relation. And if I'm complaining about something, that may become the truth for those people. So great documentation would minimize that. It's also gonna create a kind of like love effect. So people will like better your product because they're gonna know how to use it. That's gonna be faster for them to use it. And on the contrary of people that are complaining, they will become what I call virtual evangelists. You know, part of my job as a developer advocate is to help developer being successful. And I do that by speaking at conferences, creating contents online. But the benefit was with having a community around your product, with having people that love your product, is that at some point those people may start to think uh, to talk about your product in a positive way. Either, like I said, just with people around them within their network, or they're gonna write blog posts, they're gonna create a video on YouTube, and it's always heartwarming when people from the community does that. It's always exciting when someone is vocal, not for the negative stuff, but for the positive stuff. That may save you money, because again, the time you spend to explain things to people, the time customer support answered the same exact question again, it's not worth it. I, actually, it's worth it because it's for your customers, but there is a way for you to save money on that. And a good thing that I do, example, with the sales team, is that if they ask often the same question, I ask the sales team or the marketing team at my company, like, please let me know, and we're gonna update the documentation, or we're gonna have a section so next time, you won't have to explain this again. You can just send a link. So documentation, I see documentation as like a one link to rule them all. Like that should be the resource that, that you send to people when they need help, when they don't understand something, or when they want to use your product. Obviously, also, uh, you know, not everybody knows what you know. And even not myself, I knows what I know sometimes. So you would be surprised how, Often I go check my own documentation to know how to do something with my product because I just forget because there is many things, many tech stuff. So that can be helpful for you too. And by writing documentation yourself as developer, I know, I know most developers don't like to write documentation. You just need to check source code to understand that we don't like to write documentation. We don't like to write how things work. But as developer, I think we're in the best place to create that documentation, a great developer documentation for people. And by doing that, that's gonna help improve your communication skills, which is a soft skills that is not in most job posting, but it's always something that hiring manager want. Even if you work in front of a computer, even if you're like, I'm a developer, like typical, a little more introvert, a little more shy type of developer, you still need to communicate with people, either with customers or with colleagues or with other stakeholders in the business. And because we work, especially right now, in a remote world, you do a lot of text-based communication. So writing documentation, it seems far-fetched, but that's gonna help you to be a better writer, which is gonna help you to be a better communicator. So 
It all starts with the content. It's the documentation. Big surprise. It started with the content. So first thing first, if you have a developer documentation and you don't have a search option for your documentation, I want you to get out of that room and go ahead that search feature right now. There is, like, stop, stop listening to the talk. Go ahead the search feature. There is nothing, nothing more annoying than you go into documentation of a product, a service, and you don't exactly know what's the name of the feature and, or the name of the classes or the object or whatever you need to or the function you need to call, but you have an idea about what you want to do. And there is no way for you to search that information. So that is the first step. Even if your content is not good, if you at least have a search bar, that's going to be useful for people. That's going to be a great feature that you absolutely need to have. One of the premises that I start when I need to write new documentation or update documentation or, or take the ownership of documentation is that for documentation, the details, uh, the devils is in the details. Every little details count. Every little things that you can make a little bit better, every little typo that you can fix, every little things that you can just improve in your documentation is worth the time when it comes to the documentation. Because again, think about this as the foundation of your project or your product, or your service. Think about this as the first point of entry to your application. The second part, which is also important, is how you organize the information. Because you can have all the information again, you can even have the search bar, but if it's difficult for me to see like a nice path to, okay, starting from the first part, which is probably like creating an account, to the next step is probably, I don't know, uh, creating an API key because I'm gonna call it an API. The next step is to try a kind of like hello world example. If it's scattered around in my documentation, it's not really clear that there is a, a true path from like beginning to, okay, now I have a result. It may not be the result I want, but I have something that is working. It's not gonna be interesting for people. So let me show you an example. What have we done in Mindy? So again, you can go check the documentation. I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's perfect. I think there is always a place to improve what we're doing. But I'm pretty happy where we are right now. And if we check to the left, which is like the important part right now, is we have a lot of pages about a lot of things. Not that our product is complicated, but we can do a lot of things with it. But if you, I don't know if this is gonna work. No, it doesn't matter. If you look at the top, get started, this is if you never use Mindy, this is where I want you to start. It's quite obvious, get started. So where is it? Right at the top. So you have welcome to Mindy, what is Mindy? Uh, set up your account, make your first request. And after that, I'm gonna do a platform tour. Because the first thing I wanna do, I don't know for you, I'm not the most patient people in her. So when I want to try a service, an application, Whatever I want to try, I want to try it, and I want it to work right now. Again, even if it's the simplest usage ever, we have an API, I want to try the API, I want to have an answer, actually a positive answer, not an error, from the API, even if it's basic stuff. So I know it's working, and I know, I know, I know that I know how to use it. So that is the first step. But because it's in kind of like category of topics, if you already use Mindy, you don't care about getting started. You can go to account and organization setting or you can go to the next step. Oh, the other thing I want you to do, once you get started, I'm sweating like a pig. It's super humid here. Actually, it's even cold this morning. What the hell? You know Dublin is July? Is it July or August? I don't know. Is it July? Yeah, okay. I'm a little bit lost. 2020, yeah. It's 2020, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the third, uh, third years of 2020. Uh, second year, yeah, third. Oh, God. Uh, sorry about that. It's like 4 a.m. for me. So the second thing you want to do, uh, I want you to do, actually, because I try to guide you in the process. So once you get it started, you create your account, you get your API key, you made your first call, something real basic, but you made your first API call. Okay, now after you may want to set up your account, have more information, billing if you want to pay because we have a free offer, but if you want to move to the next one, we don't force you, but this. But the other thing is that 
It's an API, so you can use it, whatever you want. But what I really want you to do, and I'm not gonna force you, but what I really want you to do is to use our SDKs. And we're still building some, so we're gonna release like the Java SDK and the Ruby SDK uh, once I'm back from the conference. But right now we have fight on the node. And because it's the first thing I want you to do after, like I don't want you to code everything, I want to make your life easier. And at the same time, I want to make my life easier because if you use the SDK, it's gonna be way easier for me to help you if you have any issue or uh, to debug things or support you than if I have to support your own code. So I'm gonna put that right after. And after that, you know, it's category and category and, 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 and a lot of things. So that was the closest pictures of uh, Jon Snow, which is not Jon Snow. Uh, that gave me the uh, commercial copyright that I could use. So one of the other saying or premises that I write documentation, when I write documentation or I update or I review documentation, I need to think about Jon Snow, you know nothing. So write your documentation like if the person was going to read your documentation, know nothing about your product, know nothing about the technology you're using. You don't have to write everything, but at least you, maybe you can point them to uh, external resources, like if you need for the SDK, Python SDK, I need to do a pip install, and maybe the person is not proficient in Python or never used Python. I'm not gonna rewrite how to use those tools, but I may point to an external resources on the Python documentation about how to do that. But when it comes to my own software application, I'm gonna write every little details. Oh, you need to click next to go, next button to go to the next window once you enter your username and login and password to connect. And you need to uh, enter the uh, API key in that field. Why is that? Because again, not every developer has the same skills or expertise as you or has the previous person using your documentation. So by doing that, you're helping people that are new again, to your technology or the technology you use, but it's still gonna be easy for someone who have a little more experience or know your product to be able to just skip through the more interesting stuff for them. So always start with the premises that people just don't know what you're talking about. So more details is better than not enough. If you have pictures, screenshots, images, please, please, please put great quality one. Take great quality screenshot. So the first thing is the text. The text is the most important part of your documentation. But I don't know the percentage, but most people are visual. We are a visual creature. Put great screenshot, put great images, put high definition, great quality. There is nothing more depressing than like a well-written documentation outside of not having the search bar to have like just crappy screenshot, even if I don't use them or I don't need them. It's just ugly. And that gives the impression that you do not care about your documentation or you do not care about the quality of what you put on your documentation. And people are really quick to make one, one plus one equal two or three, depending on where you come from. Uh, it's like, yeah, okay, if you don't care about the documentation, maybe that person doesn't really care about their product. So it seems, Obvious, or it may seem stupid what I'm saying right now, because I say a lot of stupid things in my life. But it's really important, because again, it's about the quality, it's about how people perceive your documentation, slash your product, slash your service, slash your company, slash even yourself. Try to also, if you take screenshot, try to focus on the information that the people need. And when you take screenshot, another important thing that is uh, really helping uh, the accessibility or make your documentation accessible is that everything should be text-based. The screenshot should be just another way to have the information that you already written. So don't use the screenshot as something that is needed, absolutely needed for someone to use your product or to understand how to use your product. So uh, people with screen reader will be able to still use people that are visual impaired or people that have issue uh, like getting the content of your documentation, people that are in really, really slow connection can still have access to the text-based information and the images are just a plus, another way 
to consume the information. So try to put everything, actually not try, do it. Put everything text-based and use the screenshot of picture just as an addition, not as a main part of the content in the sense that like, if I remove the pictures, I don't know how to use your product. I don't know how to use that feature to understand that feature. That is super important. But also, as I said, focus on the information. So you know here, um, I have a part in Mindy platform where I can create an API key to access my API. So real basic stuff, you click on the button, but still, it's a whole page. If you don't know the platform, you're like, okay, there is a lot of button, there is a lot of links there. Uh, so if I show that screenshot, I'm like, okay, I'm not really pointing to what I want the user to do. So what I'm gonna do uh, first, yeah, actually, it's not even that. That ugly black bar, it's just ugly. It's just taking the focus, like my eyes goes directly on the black bar that is hiding my API key. And it's, it is not where I want the user to focus. So use great tools to take screenshots. There's a lot of tools out there, some free, depending on the platform, and you can do something a little bit nicer like this. Actually, it's, it's really simple, but is it nice? Like nobody's, nobody's like, yay, that is so nice. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. <sighs> Tough audience. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that is, I feel that it's nicer, but that's just the first step. The second step is like, okay, I need you to create an API key. So yeah, I'm gonna put like a big red rectangle around it. Again, quite ugly, if you want my taste. So I can have something where I'm gonna dim everything around the button. Now, okay, I still have the focus. Now I go right there, there is not that ugly red rectangle around it. I can still see the rest of the screen, but if you tell me your eyes didn't go right through creating a new API key when I changed the slide, either you're a liar or you're a liar. Your eyes went there. This is where I want you to, you to have the focus. And it's just a little bit nicer. So again, going back to the devils in the devil, it, the devils is in the details when it comes to documentation. Now I want you to go to the next step. Like next step would be even to, okay, I don't need a full page. Maybe I just want to show the section where I need to create the API key. Do I really need in the, my documentation section about creating the API key to show all the page with all the options that will take the focus away, that will people like me who have a really strong ADHD will focus on everything else except creating the API key. Or we'll focus on the creating the API key and oh, a squirrel, a squirrel, or like a new option menu. So I'm gonna click there, I'm gonna forget what I'm gonna do. So by Taking a screenshot that is more focused, that's gonna help the user. So a tool that I use, I'm not getting paid to do that, I just really love it. Actually, I paid to use that application, it's a paid one. If you're using Mac, screenshot is really, really good. But it's just one suggestion, I just really love it. It does everything that I've shown you. You can take scrolling image, video, whatever. But there's a lot of tools out there. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna propose any more tools like in that talk because I didn't try other tools since forever, uh, so I don't want to like say, oh, use that tool is good. But anyway, you just check like screenshot tool. You can even use like the basic tool that comes with your operating system. But at the end of the day, if you just go to take a better tool, there is a lot of open source one. There is some that you have to pay really, really cheaper and expensive. And they give you the small option that really changed from like a boring, ugly screenshot to something nicer with just the small options that I've shown you. You know, really able to focus, hiding the information in a better way, focusing in a better way in the information. And there, you just go on Google, Bing, whatever you use, Alta Vista, no, oh, it's been forever. Uh, and you search like, you know, screenshot tool for your OS, you're gonna find some. One of the things that people doesn't do, because once you wrote the documentation, you're like, okay, I'm done, I'm tired, like I already didn't want to write the documentation. Yeah, no, take the time to review your documentation. And when I say review your documentation, there's two things you can do. First, read everything and do it step by step, like if you were a new user. So you have a page about creating a new account? Don't do it because you know it. Read the documentation, create the new account, exactly how the documentation is written. By doing that, you're gonna see if you made a mistake, if you had assumption because you know, you know your product. The second thing is to try to get another person someone that didn't write the documentation, to review the documentation for you, that's gonna be really helpful. The other thing is that don't just review the text, review the code. And you would be surprised 
how often, maybe it's just me, but how often and I look at the code, and the recommendation, hey, that looks good. But like if I copy and paste, so I don't write it down, I don't look at it and, and write the same code, no, no. I copy and paste, select, or if I have a copy, bu uh, copy button, I select the code, I paste it in my Heidi or whatever I'm using to run the code, and I try it. Because if I write it down, I may make mistakes, I may fix mistakes. Now, you really copy and paste the code and try it. It's super important because, again, uh, it's the basic on your documentation. And you know what? What I do, I told you before, what I do is like when I try a new product, even if I know the technology or even if I know the programming language used, I'm still going to copy and paste the code example of the documentation because first, I'm lazy. And secondly, I want to try it as fast as possible to see, again, if I can just have like the minimum like return or, or whatever result that I'm looking for with the product. So copy the code and try it. And you're going to be surprised to see how little mistake we do, many little mistakes we do. It's like when we write code, you know, everything seems fine. You try to run an application and like, oh, mistakes or the debugger give you like an error or something like that. So it's the same thing with documentation. I was like, why did I put that image? <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I just remembered now. Uh, the second thing that is super important based on what I just said is have a small copy button. Uh, it, it seems stupid. And it's really not complicated. You can, there is like a JavaScript library out there that does that, that does, does it for you or plugins or depending what platform you use for your documentation. There is a lot of options to make it really easy. Have that small copy button. Because, again, lazy, I want to go fast, and most of the time trying to select the code from documentation that does not always go well. Sometimes you're gonna get like the line number, you're gonna get the text before, you know, you know how it is. Uh, it's not always uh, going super well, and again, I want this to be fast, I want this to be easy, especially at the beginning when I'm evaluating your product. So had a copy button, copy button. I don't know how, why I'm speaking with kind of like an English accent. If you want to have more information about documentation, you want to bounce ideas, this is the community you want to uh, go or be in, write the docs. It's a conference, but it's also a Slack community. It's, again, a one link to rule them all, write the docs.org. Uh, there is a lot of resources on the website. Community, it's a lot of technical writers by profession, but also a lot of people that have to deal with documentation. And it's just like, it's, it's the place to be or to go for more information about documentation. Great example of documentation, Stripe, really good one. Uh, they do a great job with the API, they do a good job with uh, overall documentation. Twilio is a really good one. GitHub is a great example with API documentation and just like, like visual how to use the product documentation. And uh, there's another one which is like really, really good. Oh, come on. This, the, the last one, really, really good. The second part that is important is the container. So, you know, you have your content. But if the thing you use to display the content or to give the content to people is not good, uh, you're not going to have a great experience. So it needs to be fast. And again, you're like, hey, Fred, but good job, Captain Hobbius. Yeah. Uh, you're going to say that to me, but like how, how often you're going documentation is just slow. It takes forever to load. So make it fast. Optimize the image. Uh, you can optimize, uh, opti optimize the images uh, without losing quality. Uh, like think about people that have slower connection because we're pretty lucky. Many places in Europe, many places in North America, and different places in the world, we have fast internet connection. But it's not always the case. And even in places when we have fast internet connection, I don't know for you how many people are not from Dublin, but like if you travel just once or twice and you need hotel Wi-Fi, you know what I'm talking about. So try to make those things fast. Uh, try to, and I'm, I can't believe I need to say that in 2022, uh, make your documentation responsive. And the funny thing is that I didn't know, but there's a developer that just like used their phone to check documentation. For me, I need a computer with like two monitors and like unless, like without that I'm dying. But people use their phone, people even use their phone to code, which I was like surprised. And it's nice, it's, it's good, it's just not for me. 
but I need to think about their users, or I need to think about someone who just needs to check something quick on their phone and they don't have the laptop, or there's an issue with laptop, whatever. No matter the reasons, your documentation should be able to be consumed in any type of platform with different viewport. Make it easy to manage, make it easy to use. So as a user, like I don't want to have create a username password to access your documentation. I want to have like a nice menu with a nice organization. So make that platform easy to use. And make that platform also easy to maintain. Because I know we're a developer, we want to create things. But when we think about stuff like documentation, the goal of having documentation is to write the documentation, to give the documentation to people. The goal is not to maintain the container of the documentation. So just reuse some things out there. There is a lot of great tools out there for the documentation. Something that is nice too, you can use GitHub or GitLab to have your documentation, make your documentation open source, even if your product is not. Anyway, documentation is public. So put your documentation in GitHub, people will be able to submit PR, that's gonna be easier for you to follow up with different version. Basically, it's file versioning, so that's gonna be helpful for you. And that's gonna, maybe have people help you with the documentation. And it doesn't need to be on GitHub. Uh, like we use README. Uh, it wasn't my choice, but we use README. And there is an option where people can suggest modification of the documentation. And we got people that we don't know that fix a typo for us, or had a little more information about something that we thought were clear, but if they had that information, it was not clear. So try to empower your community to basically help you and help themselves. So there's a lot of great opportunity out there. I usually suggest Markdown as the main language because it's just easy to use, just quite common. I know I'm at a Python conference right now, so, uh, but still, I'm gonna talk a little more about RST after, but README is a great platform if you're the only, mostly the only one working in the documentation, only one person, or you do minimum change once you wrote the big part of the documentation. If you do too many modifications, too big of a modification, it just goes a little bit crazy, but they're working on something that's gonna be closer to kind of like a GitHub PR type of process uh, by the end of the year from what I, uh, they told me. Uh, it's a great platform still. Docusaurus, it's open source. It's really a good platform for you out there. Uh, there's also Read the Docs, which is quite popular. And you know, any static site generator is good. And uh, thank you for the water, but I'm not sweating because of that. I'm just like, it's freaking human. Python here, uh, RST, restructured text, which are personally not a huge fan. I don't know if I should say that. I prefer Markdown. Okay, you never heard me say that. Uh, but you can use that with Sphinx, which is quite like the most popular uh, documentation generator out there. If you put comments in your code, you probably already know how to use RST. Uh, so those are the tools that you can use to generate your documentation pretty easily, uh, even with like, a, 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 you know, uh, in your CI CD pipeline, or if your documentation is on GitHub, or you release the SDK and you want to generate the documentation at the same time, you can use GitHub Action. So it's good for everything, but it's really well uh, working well with RST, especially uh, as Python developer. So in the end, uh, you know, uh, documentation is important. So try to create great documentation. Uh, and you may try to find the link between that image and what I'm just saying. I really don't have no idea. <laughs> Sometimes I put images, I should really put comments. Uh, but I really don't know what it was. Oh yeah, I didn't remember. That's crazy. I was going to say, like, you may, you may <laughs> have listened to all the talk or keep yawning like Mr. Dare was bored as, as like, was dying during my talk, but that's a joke. Uh, it's fine if you were bored. But, or just tired. Did, did you party last night? Yeah nobody, yeah, nobody knows who I'm talking to. I'm talking to everybody who thinks that I'm not talking to. So, uh, yeah, joke aside, uh, you know, you may, you may finish the talk and say, like, oh, Fred, like everything you said was super obvious. And I'm like, I agree, I agree. That's not the most like, oh my God, like everything that Fred said was like, like mind blowing. But now take your time, take five minutes after my talk, go check your documentation and see if you follow every tip that I said. And let's talk again after to see if like everything I said was obvious. Uh, the other thing is like, you know, uh, it's right now is a good time to build and to make your documentation better. So after the conference, 
try to invest a little bit of time like that, or try to talk to the people that are responsible for your documentation to make it better. Because it's really your superpower. As I said, it's the point of entry for your documentation. It's the place where people get their first opinion after your marketing website about your product, software, or service. So it's really your superpower if you do it well. But that can be your kryptonite if your documentation is not good. Start writing. Start writing yourself. Uh, you're just going to get better. I know you may not like it, but it's getting easier and easier. The more you write, the easier you get. And maybe at some point, you're even going to start to write blog posts. You're even going to start to write more content to either help share your passion or your expertise or just trying to help building your personal brand. So one of the other things you can do, if you don't want to do everything I just said right now, maybe hire a technical writer at your company or try to hire maybe a developer advocate, which part of their job will be to write the documentation. But don't think about the documentation as an afterthought. It's really should, it really should be part of your development process. So on that note, my name is Fred. Uh, I know I speak way too much. I spoke way too much like usually. So uh, we still have one minute for a question. But if we don't have time, grab me in the uh, conference, break room, whatever. Uh, send me an email, fred at uh, mindy.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter, F. Harper. If you want to chat more about documentation or any topic or even mental illness, you can book a coffee chat if we don't have to on the conference at fred.dev slash coffee, 30 minutes call on Zoom uh, for free. Like I'm just like sharing with people. So any comment, uh, question, insult? Well, thank you so much, Fred. Um, and yes, yes, of course. We have five minutes for actually, we have six minutes for questions. Uh, so, yeah. Awesome, thank you. So, I'm also a strong believer in documentation, but I also want to talk about the or ask about the elephant in the room. Uh, it takes a lot of, of course, effort to maintain it. And uh, to be honest, like if uh, I was only doing this all day, I would probably shoot myself because it's not really like a, it's a thankless job. Uh, so what would be your answer to um, like API documentation or even UI documentation gets outdated very quickly. So how to keep it up to date and not go crazy? What would be your answer to that? Uh yeah, it's really hard not to go crazy. No, but uh, <laughs> uh, I would say I would say try to find the right middle. So that may not be the perfect solution, but maybe try to generate your documentation from your API. So try to document your code. So it's still writing stuff. Uh, it won't be a step by step, but at least you're gonna have like basic like information about how to use the API. So I may not show you like how to create the API key on the web page things, but at least I'm gonna know how to uh, like use the API. So I would say like that's the basic things you can do. Try to merge like coding, put a little bit of like information in your code comments and like generate the documentation again using RST and Sphinx to generate the documentation. So again, not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be a, f a good first step. Uh, to help you and not like go crazy. And I understand, like, I like writing blog posts, documentation is really not the things I like to write the most, and it's why on my job, the first person I hired in my team was a technical writer. So that could be another good solution, hire a technical writer, uh, or use a freelance technical writer, which is gonna help you to write the documentation at the beginning, and after that, you just have to maintain it. But again, if, like, put it open source, so even like your community can help you maintain that thing. So try to outsource things that may help you. Thanks for the question. Hey Fred, thanks for the solid talk. It was good. Um, you seem to have thought way more about documentation than I. So I wonder, what's your opinion on? Because most of your talk was about like kind of prose documentation, high level stuff. But there's also like reference docs for like API and whatnot. What do you think is the right balance? How do you know when you're done with one and you can focus on the other? How do you know it's good enough? Sorry, I, I missed the last part. How do you know it's, it's good enough? How do you know oh. whether you want to focus more on the reference documentation compared to the pros, like the high level docs? When do you know you're done? I would say, you know, it's good enough when most people can use your product without asking you questions. I would say it's, it's like at that point it's good enough. Uh, or don't ask you basic questions. Like if they have like a, a, a specific use case, like okay, yeah, I'm not done, gonna document any like specific little use case, but like if I would say 80% of the people or people can do 80% of the stuff, I would say it's good enough. 
But it's really like, I just put this out of my mind right now. It's, there is no statistic, no research about that. It's just in my head. I'm like, I would say it's, it's good enough. Because again, devil's in the, devil, devil is in the details. But at the same time, like if you always try to improve the documentation, there is no end. So you need to find the right in the middle. I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah, OK, awesome. Cool, thing. yeah, we have three more minutes. And I also have to check if we have any remote questions. Uh, OK, perfect. Thank you for the thank you for the presentation. I loved it. Um, so I had a question. You mentioned mostly writing the documentation for the code you own, you build. Uh, sometimes when you're working in, in the larger team, that means that it's a collaborative effort. So I would like to hear any thoughts, tips, recommendations, do's and don'ts about collaboratively working on documentation. Yeah, uh, I would say. It, oh God, is there anyone working at README here? Okay, don't use README uh, because we had a lot of problems. Like it's it's a great platform, but not if you do a lot of modification and you, uh, and you collaborate with a lot of people. Again, they're coming. I, I complained to them. I had a, a meeting with their PM or whatever. Like they're gonna improve this stuff right now. It's not there yet. Uh, use a tool that make it easy and. Just don't think about technical people. You know, one of the things, at the beginning when I arrived at Mindy, I was like, yeah, we're gonna move things in Markdown, put things on GitHub, that's gonna be easier for me to review, we're gonna be able to track better, we're gonna be less dependent on readme. And it was perfect for me and my technical writer. But the less technical people that wanted to help with the documentation were not able to like use the process really easily. And they, they, they were thinking like, you know, reviewing PR and GitHub where there is a lot of text and it's not code, it's, it can be difficult. So try to use a tool uh, that's gonna make your life easier, that is easy to use. Technical or not technical people, because the goal is not to be a developer when you do that. The goal is to be a writer. Uh, the second thing is like just, just define the priorities because there's always a lot of things to do. So what is the most important? What, what will have the biggest impact or the biggest negative impact if we have it or if we don't have it in the documentation? And uh, try to have people review stuff because especially if you write documentation about your own stuff, the things you built, it's clear in your mind. Uh, you may think it's clear when you write it down, but try to have someone who didn't work on a product or that specific part of the product to review it. Uh, that would be the quick like three, four, tips that I would have for you. Uh, yeah, try also maybe, maybe the last thing also, try to, to without having like, a, forget how you name that, but like a convention, about, a convention about like the tone and voice of the developer documentation, just try to have some basics about like how you should write. Uh, you know, like, hey, uh, we're gonna write in the terms of like, Mindy has Mindy, not has like Fred who is writing the documentation. Or we're we gonna be like professional and make no jokes. Like just try to have like five or six like basic like how documentation should be written. So if there is multiple people, different people writing the documentation, it doesn't seem like there is multiple people writing the documentation. Uh, it, it seems like it's one person writing the documentation because it's always written about the same way. Perfect, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you thanks, everyone. thanks everyone, have a great uh, rest of the conference. And uh, by the way, tonight, for those of you that don't have tickets for the social event because it's, it's full, I'm gonna go to uh, like a, a, a brewery 10 minutes from here, so just ping me on Twitter uh, if you want to join. So I'm not drinking alone, like an alcoholic, so yeah. Thanks go. everyone, have a good one.